So today I'm going to be talking about why I'm leaving the automotive industry after 13 years. Uh, come on, you pe- So it's no secret that automotive technicians are leaving the industry in groves. The United States is facing a nationwide shortage of auto mechanics, causing massive backlogs in car repairs. And now, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of mechanics in the country is declining. Big shortage of auto mechanics these days. Always a little low on tax here and there. We always use another one. Right now, there's a serious shortage of auto mechanics, and it's only getting worse. It's been difficult for us to find qualified people. We're talking about the technician shortage is only going to get worse. There's a billion reasons. Everybody has their reasons of why they, they left the industry. A nationwide survey by Carlisle Research recently found that technicians are miserable. So miserable that almost a quarter of them left their dealerships last year. Feeling undervalued was a major reason. The biggest reason techs are leaving the industry right now, I think, and one of the biggest reasons why I'm leaving is flat rate pay. It's, it's kind of a dying thing. I don't think it's going to be around for much longer. Um, more and more techs are complaining about the inconsistency in the pay structure. They are complaining about the not getting paid for all their time. You know, shops like to ask for a lot of favors. They like to volunteer your time, your tools, your experience in the benefit of the customer to try to make a customer happy or, or bring a customer in, which in my opinion, I think is wrong. Um, if you're paying a tech for his time and it's performance based, you need to be paying him for everything. You can't just keep asking the, your tech to, you know, just throw the car up in the air real quick and see if you see anything loose in the suspension because the customer thinks there's a clunk. Um, I just can't, I can't see myself charging the customer, you know, for 20 minutes of your time. Well, that's 20 minutes of my time that I'm being pulled off to probably flag, you know, an hour worth of time on a job that's already sold that's paying me. And I think the flat rate pay structure is just, it's, it's not gonna be around for much longer. There's always inconsistencies in the pay. I mean, for the biggest instance is warranty work when you work at a dealer. I worked at Toyota for a few years. Um, Toyota doesn't like to pay for diagnostics under warranty, or they don't pay for diagnostics under warranty. And everything that you do under warranty is basically half the cost. So if it pays 12 hours to replace a motor on a Corolla, you're gonna get paid six. And that's just because Toyota, for some reason, is allowed to tell you that, you know, even though the job pays $12 book time, that's what you charge a normal customer. We're only gonna pay you six. And in my eyes, I think it's wrong. I think it's it's destroying the industry and it's it's making bad techs because techs are trying to beat the clock in order to break even or make money in this industry. And one of the biggest downfalls of flat rate is warranty pay. People don't don't want to do warranty work anymore. Dealers are struggling to find techs where I live in Colorado because manufacturers are just being stingy. And a lot of these newer cars are not being produced well. They're not built well. They're breaking all the time. And you're just constantly doing warranty work for half the pay. So diagnostics. Shops don't like to charge for diagnostics. They don't they're afraid to ask the customer to pay you for your time to fix a car or the customer comes in just expecting you to be able to plug your scan tool into it and it'll tell you exactly what's wrong. But on these newer cars, that's not the case anymore. Some shops are pretty good with, you know, getting diag time, but from my experience in all the shops I've worked at, you know, they, they, they want you to spend, you know, the first 10, 15 minutes on this car do a quick glance, pull a code, see what it is. And if it needs diagnostic time, mind you, you're using your tools, your experience and your knowledge to do this as a favor for the customer. Um, but they want you to, you know, invest that first 15, 20 minutes for free. Tell them if they need an hour to three hours of diag and then wait and see if that work sells. Some shops will just basically sell an hour for every car that comes in with a concern. And that's great but sometimes you get like these crazy technical you know really difficult to find faults that it takes you know pulling half the dash apart and pinning wires and checking resistance and you know trying to learn how a circuit works and trying to figure out how this component works and why it's throwing a short ground fault and all this other weird stuff it's funny because flat rate pay structure works great on build hours or book time but there's no build hours for diagnostic on a certain fault so 
when you're a more seasoned tech, more experienced tech, and you've, you've seen a lot of problems and you kind of know how to, you know, shortcut stuff and figure problems out quicker under diagnostics, you know, you'll, you'll charge the customer an hour to find a misfire. And because, you know, you're, you know, familiar with the car or just familiar with the best, quickest ways to diagnose and, you know, figure out a misfire quickly, it may only take you 20, 30 minutes to figure out what's causing that misfire and what you need to fix it. So now the shop thinks, well, we can't screw the customer. We can't charge them an hour. It only took you 30 minutes. Well, it only took me 30 minutes because I've spent 13 years learning this trade and I've dealt with this and I've, you know, got my ass handed to me multiple times trying to diagnose a misfire because I was inexperienced. Now I have the experience. I can beat the book time. And now you want to cut my pay because I have invested in the tools to do it faster. I've invested in the knowledge and the training to do it faster. And now I'm losing pay because you want to make the, the repair cheaper for the customer. And that's just not fair. It's not how, it's not how the industry should be. I shouldn't be punished for being experienced and investing a lot of money in tools to make me do the job faster so I can make more money just so you can shorthand me and tell me that I'm getting paid half because it only took me half the time. It's like saying, I can do a, a set of breaks in half an hour, so why are we charging on 1.5? Let's charge them in half an hour. It's, it's not fair. It's not fair to the tech. They don't make money. The, the shop doesn't make money. And I just think it's a double standard. That's another big reason why I'm leaving the automotive industry is because people don't want to pay for Diag. Shops don't want to pay for Diag. And, you know, riders are afraid to ask for Diag. And they think it's just a free service and it's not. Another reason why techs are leaving because of flat rate is basically the skill sets you have to know to fix a car nowadays doesn't match the pay that you're even getting paid per flat rate hour. So on a car you have to know you know how an internal combustion works, you have to know how electricity works, you have to know how a com a, you know modules communicate, how they, how they talk, how they work. You have to be an HVAC specialist, you have to know plumbing. Um, you gotta know a, a, a big majority of trades in order to fix a car and you know you look at linemen, plumbers, electricians, they, they're paid hourly and you know, they're, they're at the same pay rate as most technicians these days, depending on where you live. It's just another thing that, you know, the, the shop charges $200 per bill hour to work on your car and you pay a tech 45 to 50 bucks an hour. You know, they're getting 25% of that, which I understand shops have costs that they, they need to keep, but I just, I don't see what you're paying the tech and what the shop is making as comparable for how much work the technician does and how much knowledge they have to have and how much investment and tooling they need to have just in order to fix these cars. And it never stops. These cars keep advancing, they keep changing, new tools come out, um, and you constantly have to be on the cutting edge of it just to basically make money. A big issue with me is, so I've worked at independent shops the majority of my career. I was at Toyota for like four years, but after that, you know, I. I did mostly independent shops and the problem I've had with a lot of independent shops here is they don't specialize in anything. Um, you'll have like your Euro specialization or your Japanese specialization, but even to that aspect, like I work at a Euro sp specialized shop now and we work on Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, Mini, Mercedes, Land Rover, Jaguar, Volvo, anything European based. And you can't be efficient, make money, and work on these cars properly without really specializing on a select few. Working on everything that comes out of one continent is cool, but it's just not practical. You need more shops that specialize in, you know, Volkswagen Audi or BMW Mini. Um, <clears throat> but you can't, nowadays you can't work on every make and model efficiently and beat the book times and fix cars right the first time it's just it's difficult and going on with the diagnostic issue you know you you don't want to pay a tech to diag the car he doesn't touch this car very often he's just going to start throwing parts at it and that's basically just going to ruin the industry's reputation you know shops customers are tired of taking their cars to shops and the, the tech isn't getting paid for diag because they're afraid to ask you to pay for diag so they go oh well it just needs a wheel bearing you know that's why your, your wheel speed sensor is not working <clears throat> they throw a part at it doesn't fix it now the customer is already out another you know, few hundred bucks to do the repair properly the, the second time instead of just paying the Diag and getting the repair done and 
basically having the car finished sooner. The cost of tooling is another one. Um, Snap-on, Maco, Cornwell. Everybody's getting very expensive as far as tooling costs go. I need to buy a set of big wrenches, you know, like 27 to 36 or whatever. And to buy that full set from Snap-on was gonna be $1,400. And I just, I don't see how people can keep spending tens of thousands of dollars a year on tooling and never see <clears throat> the benefit of that profit coming back. Granted, like internet shopping is getting better, internet tooling companies are getting better. You have like Capri Tools, you have SK, Tekton, anything on Amazon you can find, which is great, but when those tools break, it's very difficult to get those warranted. You're basically just spending more money to buy a new one because it's easier than trying to deal with the company to warranty a socket out or anything like that. Also too, I mean, just inexperienced staff in the industry, you know, like service writers, service managers, um, even technicians, like not all technicians are great. You know, a lot of technicians are half. They're there for the paycheck. They're there for just to, just to collect a paycheck and go home. <clears throat> but my biggest issue is a lot of the service writers nowadays are inexperienced. They know nothing about cars. They don't know how to talk to customers. They don't quiz the customers when they bring the cars in for problems. They don't educate their customers when they're complaining about something on a car that's normal or there's nothing we can do to fix it. Technicians' paychecks are based heavily on the ability of parts people, service writers, service managers, to know their job and do their job well. And I, I feel like the industry in a whole is dying and shops are just trying to fill positions with bodies and it's it's affecting technicians' paycheck. I know it's affecting mine a lot and it's just one of those things that it's not in my control. There's nothing I can do about it. All I can do is just take the smaller paycheck and I, I don't think it's fair. I think automotive technicians are, you know, tired of it. So ways I think they could fix or retain techs or bring techs back into the industry. Just fixing pay plans. So I've worked at a couple shops that paid hourly, which I don't love, um, but I've worked at a couple that have paid basically a base salary or hourly plus a bonus. So, you know, you get paid for your 40 hours every week, plus at the end of the month, the end of the quarter, end of the week, however they do it, you get a percentage of the profit that the, the business did. So. Say, you know, I get my 40 hours paycheck and the shop did, you know, $10,000 in gross profit and I get 4% of that. So I get 400 bucks additional every week. And that was really nice because you know you were going home with the same check and you still felt like you needed to persevere and bust out work in order to make a bigger check. And I think that's way, the way the industry needs to move is a more steady income for technicians but they, they have to incentivize the techs to produce work, get cars done. So a production bonus or something along that line would, I think, bring more techs back into the industry. And you would probably, instead of seeing a shortage of technicians, you'd probably see an influx because reliable pay structures are just more desirable than feast or famine, which is basically, basically what the flat rate system is. It's feast and famine. Removing warranty times, which is something that needs to be dealt with on the government side, I believe. Manufacturers need to stop paying warranty times. I don't think it's fair that just because a car is new and it breaks because you guys can't build it correctly that we have to do the job for half pay because you don't want to take a, a bigger loss on a car that you fucked up. It's not our fault that your cars break. It's your guys' fault. We should be getting paid the full time to do the job, not half. The industry in a whole needs to just change the expectations of Customers, when they come in with a complaint, they need to just be ready to spend money to diagnose the car. Um, I don't think it's wise for shops to, you know, charge a customer for a diag and then if they get the car fixed, that, that diag is waived or telling the customer that, you know, it's, it's got a misfire on cylinder three, it probably just needs plugs. Like it's, it does a disservice to the customer, does a disservice to the shop, and it does a disservice to the technician. And I think it needs to stop. They need to charge for diagnostics no matter what. A tech has to be paid for his knowledge, time, experience, and tooling. And the, the customer needs to pay for their stuff that is broken. I think more independent shops need to specialize, 
concentrate in the, what they specialize in, you know, Volkswagen Audi. We only work on BMW Mini. We only work on diesels. We only work on Sprinter vans. Um, that way the shop doesn't need to buy an excessive amount of special tooling, scan tools, stuff like that. And they basically are well tuned into their craft. They know what's going on with these cars. They know how to fix them. They know what commonly goes wrong. And it creates an efficiency in the shop side. It creates an efficiency in the customer side. And basically both parties win-win. Um, the customer brings a car in, it's there for less time, it's cheaper to fix. And on the shop side, the, the techs work on these cars day in, day out. They know what needs to be done. They can get it done efficiently and they're constantly making money doing it. And I think that's the way the industry needs to go more is towards special specialization. That's basically the reasons why I'm looking to get out of the industry. Um, it's been a great trade. I've made good money. I've built a nice life. Um, but it's just not worth the stress anymore to be in this industry, fix cars, constantly buy tools, and just deal with, you know, poor or bad employers, bad shops, and being taken advantage of too, which is kind of one of my biggest gripes is I'm tired of just feeling used as a technician. Um, so anyways, thanks guys.